Watching K10 News and welcome back to Africa Speaks as we continue giving you stories, breaking headlines. But now we get into a conversation now. The protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights on the Rights of Women in Africa, better known as the Maputo Protocol, is an international human rights instrument established by the African Union that went into effect in 2005. It guarantees comprehensive rights to women, including the right to take part in political process, to social and political equality with men, improved autonomy in their reproductive health decisions, and an end to female genital mutilation. It was adopted by the African Union in Maputo, Mozambique in 2003 in the form of a protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. In studio with me is Felicity Feleke of the Yellow Movement from Ethiopia and Esther Nyawira of Feminet Kenya. Ladies, welcome to Africa Speaks today as we have this conversation now. The protocol has been there for 20 years. Today we celebrate 20 years. Yes. Where are we? Um, thank you so much, Dennis, for mm -hmm. having us. Um, my name is Esther, as you said. I work at Feminet. I coordinate the work of girls and young women across Africa. And with regards to Maputo Protocol, we have, we have made some small steps, I would say, but we still have a long way to go. There are still issues. We say that Maputo Protocol is one of the progressive um, uh, legal document that we have, but it is not inclusive. There are some gaps, and we have, we have had a conversation with girls, and they have, they have been able to identify those <coughs> gaps because in their realities, lived in realities they're not able to experience the full rights that mm -hmm. are enshrined in the maputo protocol mm -hmm. so on a scale of one to ten i would say mm, some countries are not even in that scale mm -hmm. because there are three countries which have not signed mm -hmm. uh, others have signed but they have not ratified they have so that means it cannot be domesticated it cannot be implemented they cannot even report um, 44 of them have signed and ratified, but there are still challenges with implementation. Some of them don't even report to the, um, the African Commission, mm -hmm. the commission that is responsible to monitor the implementation in Banjul, the Gambia. Now, Felicity, uh, as we talk about this protocol, it's all about making sure that the woman's voice is heard out there. Now, let's go to Ethiopia. In you work with uh, uh, students in school and making sure that they are heard, that they have access to education. What's the situation with regard to access to education for the girl child in Ethiopia? Well, there's a lot of challenge. Uh, currently in Ethiopia, women make up around 27% of the university population and quarter of them drop out to, before graduation. So the numbers are alarming and you can see that uh, there's already difficulties to access education and there's even more difficulties once you get into universities and you access education. And uh, for me in the capital city, uh, I, I have a lot of exposure towards uh, di the diverse situations I hear from the students that come from rural areas but for the students from rural areas even the challenges start at a very young age in high school even in primary school so access to education is a big challenge still in Ethiopia and uh, you've raised something very important that is uh, a lot of them drop out of school before graduation why is that the case and what uh, is what what are authorities doing to make sure that once a girl gets to school they get to go through the entire process all the way to graduation? Well, there is a lot of uh, various uh, issues mm -hmm. involving the dropping out of students, uh, but uh, they are mostly related to financial issues. And when you're a woman, financial issues have a uh, double, triple impact in your education. Mm -hmm. And the social stigma and the environment could be another reason for their dropping out. And yes, as we continue with this conversation, I'm just being told that the Finance Act 2023, the ruling that was to be given by the High Court has, the High Court rather has just ruled that that case will go into full hearing. Remember that the uh, Senator Kiyom Tato Busia went to court challenging that bill, that act rather, and now it is going into full hearing. We will be following up on that developing story as the day progresses. But now let's come back to our conversation right here. Esther, now, when we talk about issues to do with our girl child, access to, access to education and equal pay 
for equal job done that is in comparison to their male counterparts mm -hmm. in Kenya as we speak mm -hmm. uh, we say that we have made progress towards achieving that but mm -hmm. still there's a lot more to be done yeah. as feminine mm -hmm. where are we in in terms of, of of Kenya making sure that we achieve these things that are even as stipulated in the Constitution 2000 gender rule we've not even achieved that yet so yeah 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 so as Feminet, we one of uh, the things that we do, we talk about economic justice because they are, it's, it's not even, it's just, an, an equal pay in, in, at workplaces is just one of them, one of the issues when it comes to women and economic, people talk about economic empowerment, but for us we say it's economic justice. So one of the things that we do, we usually have um, Africa uh, Microeconomics Academy, which teaches um, African women, and especially young women, on the macroeconomic policies. How do governments operate? Why are these you know, inequalities like that? Because the first place we have to, to start this conversation is unpacking the power imbalances. Why are you mm -hmm. paid less? than a guy who is doing the same work. Maybe you even have more qualifications than the guy. And so if you are able to recognize those power imbalances and you're able to speak and address them, then mm -hmm. that's the place where we usually start. So like right now as we speak, we, the, that uh, academy is happening in South, Southern Africa. And it's a very good um, fellowship, if I may call it that way, because those alumni, they then are able to teach other girls and young women in their region. So we have had it in West Africa, in Southern Africa, and Northern Africa, I think. So we will come back to East Africa to have that conversation. Felicity and uh, Esther, one of the biggest problems that we have uh, in the continent right now, let's just say across the world, is mm -hmm. female genital mutilation. It is a problem. In Kenya, it is illegal for that to happen, but sadly, it continues to happen due to cultural uh, practices. Mm -hmm. Felicity in Ethiopia, does this happen and if so how bad is it and if it does happen what is the government's position on it okay, uh, female genital mutilation is also a problem in ethiopia mm -hmm. and it does happen uh the the government's position is that the, there is a strong political commitment to end female genital mutilation and us as uh, the organization i'm representing yellow movement uh, as i've said we are based in university and so we create these safe spaces where uh, women can come together and have a conversation about their reproductive rights and sexual rights. So there is a strong movement towards ending female genital mutilation, but there's still a huge way to go. Mm -hmm. Now, Esther, uh, back home, we know we are also dealing with FGM as we speak at the moment. Mm -hmm. As Femnit, how bad is the situation in Kenya? And even when the government says that it is putting its foot forward in making sure that these ends, are, are they doing enough? Because we find that some cases, uh, people just go through uh, the cultural norms where they just sit down and talk about it, yet there is an injustice that has happened. How do we make sure that the law is actually followed and uh, implemented as expected? Um, that issue of, uh, the issue of FGM, um, the commitment, you know, you have to put, we usually say that you have to put your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. So imagine if we said or if our MPs in the parliament had the zeal, the same energy they have when some issues are being discussed, like yeah. the bill, mm -hmm. what would happen? FGM would be an issue that we just read in the books. It wouldn't exist. But we don't put money in such issues. And it's just, unfortunately, it's just because it's, they're facing girls and young women. Because who are majority people in the, in the, in the parliament? They are men. So, we don't put money in those places because we don't see it as an investment until we look at it as an investment that's when we will be able to do that but for now because we don't look at it that way many girls and young women they will continue to they continue to face fgm and what happens after fgm they get married now it is 20 years of the Baputo protocol being in force mm -hmm. you know today is the 20th day it's being observed in kenya what does this mean to you felicity well, for me, as a young girl, uh, the Maputo Protocol extended protection before I was even born. And it's, a, it's an exciting to, thing to be part of this historical moment. 
and the Maputo protocol in many ways reinforces our rights of course as the years went by there are new uh, issues that should be adapted into the Maputo protocol and issues that we are discussing now and it's an exciting thing to be part of the conversation that is ongoing mm -hmm. now today in Kenya what does this mean for us the locals what does this mean to that young girl who uh, is thinking of dropping out of school because of the pressures on getting married early or because of the pressures of not having school fees or she just feels like I'm not being given the enough support from the government, from community, from parents and people around them? As I answer that question, I, I am thinking of, we usually say that the, in Africa the, the, age, the median age is 19 years and the majority of the population is 18 years to 24 years. I, my, as I think uh, about this historical momentum, I keep on reflecting and asking myself how many women, and even men, the general population, how many people know that it is historical and that there, there is even something called Maputo Protocol. Mm -hmm. If it was something, right now everybody knows about the bill, uh, but nobody, very many people don't know about the Maputo Protocol again because we have not invested in it and it is not part of the curriculum so unfortunately many people don't know about it so many people don't know it, it has remained the work of CSOs uh, rather than the work of the government because it's actually their document that they are held accountable so a few people a few girls and young women will benefit from it because they will now have that awareness that they are, they are, their rights are not just enshrined in the constitution of Kenya, they are also enshrined in a regional document that they can use. Mm -hmm. uh, but the number of those who know is very few. I think finally to both of you, yeah, I would w just want to ask, as this Maputo protocol does exist there, it is on fighting for the rights of the woman protecting it, yeah? Mm -hmm. So then how do we bring both men and governments into this conversation so that it does not just start with the women and end with them but you bring these other part of the society to understanding the need of protecting these rights felicity in a minute uh, I believe in shining the uh, idea that women rights are human rights mm -hmm. and as long as our rights are protected, that the community will prosper. And in shining these things into the cultural setting, into localized communities, will bring men and the government into the journey to make sure that Maputo is domesticated and implemented and we'll see the realities on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, men have a role to play in being allies, supporting the agenda of women and girls. Um, so that they can enjoy the full rights um, and ha they have to understand their role um, not in a way that is domineering but in a way that is uh, they should actually men should promote positive masculinity mm -hmm. to their fellow men <laughs> yes thank you very much ladies and wish the very best as you observe this day we know it's big not only for women out there but the entire continent and also the men folk we stand with you and we say let's protect the women's and the girls right in africa and across the world the very best to you again thank and you then so again much. we go back to that developing story the breaking story right